Smoke still rose over the blackened ruins of Fort Mims on September 2nd, 1813. Only three days had passed since the fall of the fort. Red Stick forces now unleashed a second attack. The new target was a frontier community on Bassett Creek in today's Clark County, Alabama. Since the fall of Mem Station, commanded by the late Major Beasley, the enemy have not been inactive. On the first instant, two of Colonel Carson's spies were wounded on the Alabama. On the second, two families of women and children, 12 in number, were killed on Bassett's Creek, and one woman and child were badly wounded and scalped, but have been brought into Fort Madison. Brigadier General Ferdinand L. Claiborne, September 21, 1813. The victims were from the Kimball and James families. Only a handful of people escaped, running one mile to nearby Fort Singfield with news of the disaster. Another survivor, Mrs. Sarah Merrill, a member of the James family, was wounded and scalped. She found her small child gravely wounded, but still alive. Taking him in her arms, she tried to crawl through the night to the fort for help. Unable to make it, carrying him the entire way, she hid the boy in a hollow log and appeared outside the gate of Fort Sinkfield on the morning of September 3rd, 1813. A few days after Fort Mims was taken, a family of women and children, 12 in number, was murdered by the Indians. One woman with a child escaped after being scalped. I saw them, but can neither describe to you the unfortunate objects nor my feelings on the occasion. They got into Singfield Station on the next day. Captain Alexander Calvert, aide-de-camp to Brigadier General Claiborne, September 23, 1813. A party of men found the boy and brought him back to the fort. Miraculously, both he and his mother survived. The fate of another child who disappeared during the Kimball James attack remains a mystery to this day. Fort Singfield was a settler stockade, not a military post. But Lieutenant James Bailey led a detachment of mounted volunteers from another nearby fort to bury the dead of the Kimball and James families. After they had completed their object, they returned to Singfield's for dinner, where there was about 20 men stationed. They had scarcely alighted from their horses at the gate when a heavy fire commenced on the fort from about 60 creeks. There were but 27 white persons in the fort. They defended themselves bravely for an hour and a half when the enemy retreated. Our loss was one killed, two were wounded. The Indian chief and 14 of his warriors were left dead on the ground and as many more were badly wounded. They took seven dragoon horses that were tied to the gate. Captain Alexander Calvert, September 23rd, 1813. General Claiborne's report of the attack, based on eyewitness accounts, was similar. Colonel Carson sent out Lieutenant Bailey and 11 dragoons to bury the dead. On their return, passing Sinkfield Stockade, a small place erected for the security of a few families and manned by about 15 men but crowded with women and children, the lieutenant and his party accidentally stopped and had scarcely entered the gate before the stockade was furiously attacked by about 60 Indians. The dragoons were fortunately armed with good muskets in addition to their swords and defended the place with great gallantry. The few citizens who were within the walls also fought well. After an action of two hours, the enemy retreated, leaving their chief dead within a few yards of the gate. Four other dead bodies were found, and it is supposed several were taken off, as it is their custom to do whenever in their power. Our loss was one man and one woman killed and some dragoon horses taken off. Brigadier General Ferdinand L. Claiborne, September 21, 1813. In later years, many colorful legends grew about the Battle of Fort Singfield. Perhaps the most popular is the story of Isaac Hayden, who literally let slip the dogs of war to save a group of women. Several women were at the spring whose retreat was hopelessly cut off and now was performed a sudden deed of noble daring. Isaac Hayden, mounted on a horse, cheered all the dogs of the fort and number 60 or more upon the Indians and dashed forward himself to the defense of the women. 
The ascent from the spring is steep. The bold horsemen and the fierce hounds rush down, and the Creek warriors were forced to halt and defend themselves from these dogs of war. The brave dogs did their duty well, and the gallant Hayden effectually secured the entrance into the fort of every woman except one, Mrs. Phillips, whom the Indians overtook and scalped. Hayden's coat was riddled, it is said, with bullets. His bold horse fell under him, but recovering again, followed his unharmed rider into the fort. Rev. T.H. Ball, 1877. The storytellers said that the attack on the fort was led by the prophet Josiah Francis. Although he is not mentioned in the eyewitness reports written in the days after the battle. Fort Singfield was abandoned as soon as the Red Sticks withdrew. The remaining settlers left for their own safety. Almost simultaneously, a British warship unexpectedly appeared off the Spanish city of Pensacola. The importance of its mission as our series continues. Exploring the War of 1812 on the Gulf Coast. I'm Rachel Conrad for Two Egg TV.